Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're joining us, we're so happy you decided to join us for Mount Calvary's Daily Devotions for Tuesday, July 16th. My name is Trevor Hucklin. I'm the BC intern here at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, and we're excited to have you today. And this week, we're spending time focusing on two disciples, James and John. And we know that they're brothers. We, knew that they, we know they're both fishermen. They're the sons of Zebedee. And we know that from yesterday, they were very close to Jesus. You see, there were 12 disciples and many even more that followed Jesus as he went from town to town and did his work for three years. But Peter, James, and John are told to be probably the closest three to Jesus, the three closest friends of Jesus. So we have to get that picture as we read the rest of our passages this week to know how close that group of people were. Peter, James, John, and Jesus. Today we're going to read a passage out of Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 35. And this passage is from James and John. And if you remember yesterday, I, I told you that James and John can, aren't very shy. They can be pretty bold. They can be pretty, uh, pretty strong or mighty. And we're going to hear that today as we read our, our passage, uh, Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 35, where John and James have a request for Jesus. Let's hear what their request is. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, this is Jesus, He's, they're speaking to Jesus, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right and one on your left, in your glory. And Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drank? Or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those who have whom it had been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they became indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be a slave to all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. There's a lot in this passage that we're going to have to break down here in just a couple minutes, but I want to start with where we ended. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The first half of this last verse uh, in a, is worded a different way in, in Matthew 23 where it says, uh, Whoever is exalted will be humbled. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Which is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. And Jesus here is putting himself in that, in that group saying, I, I didn't come to be served. We see Jesus at the Last Supper getting on his knees and washing his disciples' feet. Because he did not come to be served, but he came to serve. You see, Jesus also in this last verse is telling them what is going to happen. But the Son of Man came to give his life as a ransom for many. Once again, he's telling, he's telling the disciples, I've come into this world for one purpose, to die on the cross for your sins. That's it. That's the goal. That's the purpose. That's why Jesus came for you and for me. And what I love is he doesn't just tell this to James and John. But after James and John, we're going to get to the request in a second. Make this big request, this massive request. Requests all the other disciples start to look at them sideways, start to become indignant towards them. And Jesus immediately tells them all to come to him. Everybody scoot on in. We got a lesson here. And we get this lesson from Jesus. That those who want to sit 
at the top. Those who want to be exalted are the ones who will be humbled. Are the ones who will be a slave to them. But those who humble themselves are the ones who will be exalted. I, I was reading a couple different translations of this. And in one translation, I don't remember which one it was, forgive me on that, but it says James and John innocently ask a request of Jesus. Innocently. They're innocently asking to sit at Jesus' right hand and his left hand in all of his glory. I don't think there's a way to innocently ask that as sinners that we are. We live in a culture, and this shows that, that 2,000 years ago, the culture, even though it has changed some, has not changed drastically. James and John, when they ask this, are just thinking about who? Themselves. In today's culture, how many things, how many people, how many businesses, how many products want us to think about ourselves rather than the, our neighbor? Rather than the person who doesn't have what we have. Now when we get to the request, you see they ask, can I sit at your right and left hand? And I'm sure Jesus, Jesus all-knowing, probably was able to not laugh as much as we would have. They come with this bold request, and Jesus probably would have, or could have just laughed them off and walked away. But he knew the question was coming. He's Jesus, right? He knows, he knows what's going to happen before it happens. And he, has this, and he has this answer saying, will you drink the cup that I drink? And kind of funny, James and John, yeah, we can, we, we'll do that, yeah. But they have no idea that the drink that Jesus has to take is to be arrested, to be tortured, and to be hung on a cross for each and every one of us. James and John think of themselves that they can do what Jesus is going to do. But they can't. And to, to James and John's defense, they don't know what's coming. They don't know what Jesus is going to go through. They don't know how Jesus is going to die. How he's going to be mocked. How he's going to be shamed. How he's going to have nails driven in his hands and in his feet. But they miss the point. The point is not to be like Jesus. You and I can't be like Jesus. James and John here cannot be like Jesus. Jesus doesn't ask us to be like him. We have that funny little qualm, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And it's important to think about that when we're making decisions. What decision can we make that reflects the love that Jesus has for me and the love I have for him? That's very important. But as sinners, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. And that just makes Jesus all the more powerful in his death and resurrection, not any less. And this request they make, Jesus has one more thing. He says, those seats have already been appointed. Appointed by my Father. Appointed by God the Father. You see, so when we think about this whole passage, I really want us to come back to the end. Where all the glory and all the exaltation is not what we should seek. Being noticed for stuff is not where we should look. And sometimes that can stink. If we have a really good idea, if we do something really, really well, we really can want to be noticed for that. We can really want to be thanked for what we've done. And that's important. If you're in, someone, if you're in a position where you can give thanks... Don't, don't be afraid to go out of your way and tell somebody thank you. But we should not do the things we do in order to be put on a pedestal or in order to be sitting at the right or the left hand of Jesus. We should do the things that we do in our lives because we are to serve like Jesus. And because Jesus loves us so much that he came into this world to die for you and for me. And James and John here are kind of missing that point. And it's easy to, to kind of diss on James and John or any of the disciples because we have the hindsight vision. How are you missing this? How did you not get the point? Newsflash, we wouldn't have got the point either. 
And it's okay to miss the point. Because Jesus came for us because we miss the point over and over and over again. And his mercy overcomes our wrongdoings. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your son Jesus, Lord. Thank you so much for the 12 disciples as we get to learn from them. The way that they followed you so that we can follow you as well. Lord, I pray that you would be with us. Keep our hearts full of love for you and for one another. Keep our minds sharp. Lord, and keep our bodies strong. That we may continue to live our lives for you. Not to be served, but to serve. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you all have a great Tuesday, and that we'd see you again tomorrow.